Welcome to So Bad It's Good, Met 2023 extravaganza, because when you think fashion, you think Ryan Bailey. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll notice that I am in a fashionable robe. Uh, this is inspired by ASAP Rocky's outfit last year when he showed up to the Met in my grandma's blanket with Rih Rihanna, and I thought that was an amazing look, so I'm doing that this evening. What a night for fashion, folks. Are you as inspired as I am? Now, before we get into some of these looks, uh, if you're listening to this on the podcast, I'm going to try to paint a description of these outfits, and only I can do it best. Let me tell you why I am qualified to tell you about <laughs> Let me tell you why I'm qualified to mansplain to you about fashion. I primarily shop at Old Navy, and I really haven't bought a lot of new pieces. I call them pieces in probably about four to five years now. I have a, I bought a couple of pieces for BravoCon from Banana Republic because I went fancy. Uh, but usually it's Old Navy. Now, Old Navy is one of my favorite design houses, and they've had a lot of good creative directing over the years. My favorite, of course, is uh, 2008 when Randy Gilbert was the head of Old Navy Fashions. And uh, I think about Randy every day. Shout out to Randy Gilbert. But uh, these, these fashion looks... These are all inspired. The Met Gala, of course, there, there's a theme every year. And this theme, the theme this year was Carl Lagerfeld. And sorry, Carl Lager. I keep calling him Lager. <laughs> it's Carl Lagerfeld. No, it's Ca Carl Lagerfeld. God, I was yelled at today for saying the name wrong in today's episode, Lagerfeld. And he is truly an icon. Now, all joking aside, I... As I get older and as uh, it's more explained to me and people walk me through it, I do appreciate the artistry that goes into this. All of the work, all of the hours that goes into making these costumes, thinking about the look. There is so much creativity in fashion. I mean, truly, there is nothing to joke about. We are going to joke about it today, but I really do respect it. And I love to think about the story that goes into it. I like to think about all of the creative people around the artist trying to achieve some sort of vision. I can get on board with that every day, all day. Like, I love that kind of thing. People trying to accomplish a goal through art, design, look, beauty. And I will say, like, I was looking at Naomi Campbell, and uh, I was just saying, man, like, she herself is a work of art. Just what a gorgeous woman. Uh, it, it, I used to think it was... Uh, not gross, but I used to think it was like, oh, who cares if somebody's beautiful, blah, blah, blah. But as I get older, I really appreciate that certain people are stunning. Certain people are kind of works of art themselves. And I know I'm a work of art myself in terms of my personality, but it is some people are just truly genetically blessed. And we see a lot of them on the red carpet at the Met. So it is fun to watch this. And I genuinely get excited in pop culture when people get excited about anything. And so many of my good friends really, truly get excited about this every year. So I am hopping on board the fashion train. And I'm going to show it through my eyes. But I want to tell you really quick about Karl Lagerfeld. He's a German designer. He unfortunately passed away in February of 2019. Now, he was the creative director of the French fashion house Chanel. We all know Chanel. I will never own Chanel um, unless I find something. Law. I mean, unless it's like one of those things where I go to like a like a one of those garage sales where I accidentally stumble upon something and then realize I'm sitting on a thirty thousand dollar piece. Um, so, but Carl uh, Lagerfeld was with Chanel from. Let's see, he became their sole designer in nineteen seventy four. And uh, he remained there until the end of his life. But he also did so much work. He had his own brand, of course, but he also worked with Fendi, Chanel. And I just remember Karl Lagerfeld over the years when I was younger, because you'd always see him pop up in these pictures with all of these stars. And I remember, I mean, this is just how I, I remember he had put on a lot of weight over the years. And then I remember he got super skinny. He got super skinny. And this is way before Ozempic. So he really put in the work and he would wear these leather gloves and he would have the white, sh the white shirt with a little like kind of stringy thing, right? <laughs> it's already, he would have that stringy thing where a necktie goes and it would be like, he just looked really intense. He looked like he would be carrying a riding crop at all times, but he's a legend. 
And so many people spoke so highly. So tonight the theme was him. And a lot of people, I think, did it justice in what I hear people talk about. They think they think these people did him justice. So I really hope he did. So let's start off here. Uh, we got a picture of Robert Pattinson, better known as Batman. So already I'm like, yes, I love Batman. And Suki Waterhouse, his girlfriend. Uh, fun fact, Suki Waterhouse used to, where I worked at the acting school, she used to get coached at my acting school. And she was really nice. She would come in a lot. This is pre Robert Pattinson. So let's see here in my fashion wisdom. Let me explain what she's wearing. She looks like she's wearing like this cream kind of potentially see-through. I can see a little leg. Looks like a lot of extensive flower patterns on the dress and Rob Pattinson looking like a G. Is that a bolo tie? No, it looks like the piece, the top piece of a bolo tie without the actual, the bolo tie part, without the leather straps. He's wearing a really long black coat. The hair is tussled just right. Would I have loved to have seen him in the Bat Batman outfit? Of course, but it's not Batman's night. It's Carl Lagerfeld, and I think he did great. Okay, so moving on. <laughs> well, I mean, listen, Robert Pattinson is now with Suki Waterhouse, but he used to be with a lady named... Um, uh, uh, this the 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 girl Kristen Stewart, Kristen Stewart from Twilight, best known for Twilight. But here she is. Let me explain to her. She looks like a really cool waiter. She's got like this white, like uh, like a white tuxedo jacket with like black lapels, uh, like a three pronged black tie. It's got black pants. It looks like a is that a Chanel belt? White little penny loafers there. Her hair's all tussled like a young Elvis. I mean, I'm telling you, I know, um, I believe Kristen Stewart has a girlfriend now, but I'm telling you, this Kristen Stewart, I bet she, like, I bet she can get any girl she wants. She looks like, she looks very cool here, what I'm looking at. I, like, she also looks like uh, she'd be willing to fight me at any point. This is, by the way, this is uh, Renesmee's mom from Twilight. This is actually her. You can really tell. She looks a little like Renesme here. Okay, moving on. We got Penelope Cruz. Penelope looks beautiful. Is this kind of a blue thing? <laughs> Is this kind of a blue thing? She's, I don't know. She looks like Little Bo Peep, but it's like a light blue here. I mean, she looks stunning. How Like her smile is the biggest piece of jewelry she's wearing. She looks gorgeous, but it reminds me of Little Bo Peep. The uh, It looks like a very thin material. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a very thin material. The skirt's all poofy. It feels like there's like it looks like there's like like a big crepe, like thirty like you know crepes have like thirty layers. The, but it just looks stunning. Good for you, Penelope. Okay, now this is Salma Hayek. Do you know Salma Hayek used to date Edward Norton, the actor from Fight Club? They were in a multi-year relationship, and now she's with like a billionaire dude. Anyway, she looks stunning in this red dramatic outfit. It's like flowing onto the floor. There's like a train element to this. The uh, off the off the cut. It looks like these kind of white. What are these like white little pearls like hanging off the shoulders? And they look the bodice of it almost looks like vinyl a little bit. Gorgeous, Salma. Yes, I always. By the way, when I was watching E earlier, there I was like, yes, girl, yes. So I'm just gonna do that too because I, that makes me think I'm more into fashion. Okay, now we're getting into Ryan Bailey territory. You guys know I'm in love with Dua Lipa. Uh, I was very upset when I heard the rumor that she was dating Jack Harlow at the end of 20, 2022, which turned out just to be fake for PR, probably for Jack. But she looked, I mean, listen, she's just beautiful. She's beautiful. She looks like she's wearing also the necklace that that old bag from Titanic threw, like the heart of the ocean that she threw back into the ocean. And Bill Paxton looked like, I was like, how dare you go out to that ocean, Kate Winslet, when you're older and throw that ocean? Could have fed all of these, like, starving nations. And she's like, uh, never let go, Jack. And it's like, you let go in the actual time he didn't need to let you go in the movie. And you killed him. You flat out killed him. Well, anyways, it looks like she's wearing the heart of the, that heart of the ocean necklace. It's like a big white dress. It has, like, a lot of black outlining on it. I think she looks hot, hot as can be, man. I hate to be a pervy guy, but I think she looks hot. So there you go. Okay, Taika Waititi. Uh, I hope I'm saying his name correctly. He is the amazing director. He directed Thor and Jojo Rabbit. He is also now engaged to Rita Ora. Uh, congrats to Rita. But he is, this is really interesting. He's like wearing like this gray full length. It, 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 there's like a, a satiny look to it. There's also pearls dangling. 
You can a lot of necklace wear. He's shaved his head, his gray and white hair, kind of poking out, kind of a five o'clock shadow. And it, there's like a pants, a white pants element underneath, but it also is giving a little bit of a skirt vibe to it. He really pulls this off. Most people, I don't think, could pull this off, but he's got the swagger. He's got the attitude. It's really, it's, I'm taking note. Next time I do an Old Navy binge, this is how I want to wear it. And now that I'm thinking about it, I might start going into the, the ladies' department at Old Navy and try to piece things like this together because to me this looks cool and it also looks like it breathes it looks like there's a lot of material flowing up from it to his leg area because you don't have swamp bass or anything like that um i love this so taika congratulations phoebe bridgers i love phoebe bridgers so much her uh, man her albums mean so much to me like there's no stranger in the alps is one of the best albums like best first albums of any artist out there but i see phoebe bridgers in this type of outfit a lot there's a little bit of um you know kind of mod kind of uh black with uh what looks like kind of white <laughs> I, I wish i had more of a language for this kind of like white little speckles everywhere it looks like constellations but in like <laughs> like straight line patterns, uh, very pale as usual. Her hair is dyed gray. Um, I don't know. I think Phoebe looks very beautiful. Of course, she uh, you know, was engaged to Paul Mescal, the actor who was just nominated for an Academy Award and is allegedly, I don't know if she still is, but was dating Bo Burnham, um, comedy icon Bo Burnham. But Bo Burnham, I don't think was there, which, by the way, Bo Burnham, if you see him at award shows, he'll now go into full Kanye West kind of outfits where he'll just wear masks and stuff. Very interesting. And now that I say that, I kind of would have liked to have seen Bo Burnham at the Met Gala, but Phoebe Bridgers looks beautiful, but I've seen her in this type of outfit a lot. So I think she's very comfortable in this look. Uh, okay. David Byrne, the lead singer of the talking heads, a, uh, an amazing solo career himself. He is dressed all in white, but he has these really cool, colorful tennis shoes on. He, uh, it's kind of this really white colorless jacket. Uh, and he, the, the biggest accessory you can have is he is walking a bicycle. He brought a bicycle to the Met Gala. Now, this is not uncommon for the Met Gala to have props. Uh, some people carrot top it up at the Met Gala. You'll remember Frank Ocean had that scary green baby he brought to the Met Gala. Um, and I think this is amazing. I, I love, how can you not love David Byrne? What an artist. So I was very thrilled to just see him there. And of course, David Byrne is going to be walking a bicycle into the Met Gala. Also, I mean, genuinely, he does ride a bicycle everywhere. So also, he might not have been able to find a place to park his bicycle. New York is crazy that way, and you don't want to get your bicycle stolen. Who knows if this was part of the outfit or actually he just couldn't find a place to park it. Okay, now this is... Uh, now we're getting into it. This is going to be interesting because we have uh, Harry Styles' ex-girlfriend. <laughs> now she's just going to be known as Harry Styles' ex-girlfriend. She is the director of Don't Worry, Darling, which I actually really dug. It was like an extended Black Mirror episode. Olivia Wilde. Now, Olivia Wilde, I, I root for Olivia Wilde. I do, I do. But she is dressed here. Uh, man, she is dressed in this white outfit where the top looks like, like, you know, when you were like a high school football player in the eighties, they always like did those little half cut shirts looked very weird. I just remember seeing that pop up in a lot of movies and as a kid, not understanding why, why dudes were dressing that way. And, uh, the, the big thing about this outfit is you got that cutoff and then you got the white bottom area. Her whole midriff is showing almost up to the bottom of the boob. And what's interesting then there is like this etched pattern that connects the two pieces that goes directly up to the neck. So the pattern, you guys, is almost in the shape of a violin or a ukulele, a ukulele or a guitar or a pineapple with a long pineapple <laughs> with a longer neck than a normal pineapple would or a maxi pad. So it's a fun fact for a lot of the ladies. They'll use a sanitary napkin and it kind of looks like potentially a little bit of a sanitary napkin. Harry Styles is not with her uh, for all of you guys rooting for them. I believe he's potentially on tour overseas, so he couldn't make it. And she's also wearing these kind of Wonder Woman cuffs 
that are not connected. And unfortunately, there was another person that was wearing this exact same dress, but in black. Um, it is the Vogue China editor in chief, Margaret Zhang, uh, wore a very similar outfit, but she wore it with like jet blue hair and wore this in black. And I mean, they're both really pretty. I don't think this outfit works on Olivia Wilde, but what do I know? You know, like she's obviously beautiful regardless of what she wears. But I would find it very embarrassing how this could possibly happen, where if you're going to the Met Gala, I would imagine the number one job is to make sure nobody is wearing the fucking outfit that you decide to show up in. I will tell you, just I hate to keep name dropping Old Navy. By the way, anybody working for Old Navy want to give me some sort of sponsorship? I've shouted you guys out so damn much in the last three years because I believe in your product. But I went to Coachella last year and uh, I had not been out to a store in a long time and i uh you know i'm also looking for affordability in my fashion like a lot of the people at the met gala and i picked out this button shirt that was kind of like hip and fun which is never good because you know it's probably not going to be hip and fun and then i went to coachella and of course the first day i saw like five dudes in the exact same button-up old navy shirt and there's nothing that really takes you out of a moment when you're spotting more than one person in the exact same button up old Navy shirt. Cause then you're just like, fuck, I just had to keep running away from that. Per like each time I saw a new person, cause you're like, you're looking around, you're going to spot the exact same pattern. It's very embarrassing. So I imagine Olivia Wilde couldn't have been happy and whoever is styling her, you guys have to have a very tough conversation in the morning. You know, Olivia Wilde is texting like, I need to talk to you pronto in the morning and she's like harry you can you did you see what happened um okay next uh emily rodzikowski listen yeah obviously emily yeah she's beautiful right she's got the boobs she's got the body she, i you know i don't trust her as far as i can throw her i think she took olivia why i you know i know they were broken up but she went after that harry styles I don't trust this girl. I'm telling you, she is not a girl's girl. And I think she hides behind feminism when she can't just admit she's done things wrong. I'll say it. I'm sorry. I'll, I, I will completely go to bat for that. She, I think she needs to admit sometimes when she's at fault. It's all right to want to kiss Harry Styles, but don't pretend you're friends with Olivia Wilde and then go behind her back after she's confided in you that she is still in love with this dude. And then you jet off to Japan, and all of a sudden we have pictures of you grabbing his ass and trying to get his hands on your ass, all that stuff. Anyways, she looks gorgeous. <laughs> she looks gorgeous in this kind of light, what is this, like a light brown? It's all etched in. It kind of, there's like these two straps that go up her like boob area. And and she's got bangs, you guys. She's rocking the bangs. Who knows if these are real or clip-ins. And the diamond necklaces, uh, two teardrops uh, coming off of each ear. I mean, listen, she's always been good looking. It's not like, oh, wow, I finally, it's not like Ali Sheedy's transformation in the Breakfast Club. You're not like, oh, wow. You, which, by the way, Ali Sheedy in the Breakfast Club, by the way, everybody better still be watching John Hughes movies. And you better be telling your kids about these movies and making them watch it. I think Ali Sheedy was more attractive when she was like the goth kind of alternative girl. And then when Emilio Estevez went and like, you know, like, had like uh, what's her nuts put on makeup and stuff on her Molly Ringwald. I thought she looked worse. I was like, oh yeah, take away all of the specialness of Ali Sheedy. Anywho, Emily Rodriguez looks great, but that's what we expect from her. Oh, Doctor Dre, what up? He is wearing a really nicely fitted bla uh, black suit, but then he's got this uh, like a very neon blue shirt with a uh, bl blue tie. But what is interesting, there's like a black lattice pattern. Uh, at a couple different places in the opening of the suit. He looks he looks great, man. I, I Dr. Dre, hats off. He is just coming off of a big divorce settlement a year ago, so I'm hoping he got this at a budget. Um, Sydney Sweeney, she is the actress on a lot of people's tongues right now. She is not wearing Glenn Powell. Instead, she is also wearing kind of this uh, rose-colored uh, dress, uh, the draping goes onto the floor. There looks like a black bow that goes from the knee down in an area. And it has like little sparklies everywhere. Uh, what are these like butterflies, a flower pattern? Who knows? Um, she's got a lot of cleavage showing beautiful hair. Um, I, you know, I'm telling you guys this, I don't know if these are considered wins or not. She looks pretty. 
Uh, the only thing I've really had a strong reaction to that I didn't think worked so far is the Olivia Wilde thing. And I thought Kristen Stewart scared me a little bit. Um, Rami Malik. Now, Rami Malik, he looks like he's just wearing black pants, black shirt. He also looks like some sort of waiter that actually is like, or some kind of attendant that it was like mistakenly got on the red carpet. But it's a nicely fitted shirt, it looks like. There's like a maybe a vest. Very, it's it's almost so underplayed that you're like is this this is possibly brilliant this might be really really good congrats rami then we go to ice spice ice spice is having a moment right now she is on everybody's tongues she had a huge meeting with kim kardashian and northwest for a tiktok video a little bit ago and now she is a model for skims and really just kind of kind of popping up everywhere so she was at the met gala she has this very diamond encrusted um camera that she's carrying and her hair is not in the curled up little orphan annie look that she usually has but it's straightened going down her back obviously there's extensions involved and she's wearing this really beautiful white form fitting dress once again the draping the you know is all on the floor man that met they gotta clean that floor you just like getting like trains dirty all the time but there's like this kind of etching i think it's like a there's like a gold etching that goes up and down the arm and along the side of the hip. She looks really cool, actually. <laughs> Irina Shake. This is Bradley Cooper's ex that uh, they have a, a child together. Dated Kanye for a moment. Has dated uh, Irina. Uh, she's had a very interesting dating history. You should look up her dating history sometime. Uh, moving on, Bradley Cooper. I just want to take another look at you. I wish he had gone to the Met Gala as his character from A Star Is Born. I'll say it again. I just love that character so much. He that he did such amazing beard work in that movie. I truly wish he would do more movies as that character, even though, spoiler alert, that character unalived himself uh, towards the end of the movie. But anyways, very standard. You know, you're reminded that Bradley Cooper is a good looking guy. He's rocking aviator shades. Uh, I'm imagining I wish the only thing that I wish I had right now is somebody to tell me. Is this Chanel? Is this is this Carl Lagerfeld? I'm trying to find the I can I can understand certain elements of Carl Lagerfeld's work, but you know, oh then Lizzo, by the way, Lizzo, her hair's all up in this right kind of cool bouffant. Not that's I don't think that's a bouffant, but she looks cool. She looks beautiful. She has like a big black dress on. There's like white pearls. I saw a lot of pearls tonight. Uh, Corey Kiefer from Summer House has definitely made a fashion impact across the board, but this is decked out in pearls. Cause we also saw Kim Kardashian decked out in pearls, but Lizzo looks awesome. Um, okay. Now Janelle Monet, you talk about fashion being drama, fashion being art. And this is it right here. She is wearing this really cool, like see-through like hoop, but like the hoop has a very big structure that goes down almost to the floor. She's wearing these insanely high heeled boots, like patent leather, white and black. And there's this like the whole big hoop, but then there's like this giant coat, like a giant jacket, like a tuxedo jacket, but it's like one side is white with black outline. One side is black with white outline and it goes over the hoop and it just fans out and it is stunning. And her, the face she's making in this photo is like Zoics. And then you take off the jacket and she's almost nude underneath you guys. You can see her black like under panties and, and her black bra. And you just, it's like just the see-through big hoop. And it is stunning. This is like, a, there's a story here. It really sets your imagination on fire. But to me, this is worth the price of admission. I was so excited to see this. I love what, I love whoever did this. Uh, this is, it makes me want to know the behind the scenes of how this came to be because i'm very curious about like how all of these people that, that are wearing these outfits they obviously have to hire people they probably get presented looks i want to know the collaboration between the person wearing it and the person dressing them i want to know how all of that works now little nas x is dressed up like one of my nightmares it looks like he is uh i can't tell uh, he's in like white boots. He's all painted white. I think this is like all paint, right? And then he's got like this white uh, underpants and you can kind of see a little bit of an outline of a dong here. Uh, by the way, in the underpants area for all the women that don't know, that's where you keep your dongs. And then it looks like it's got little 
th- like little dots all over his body. But then he's got this kind of white Game of Thrones White Walker mask that like kind of I think it's like this is all diamonds or something. He's painted his lips white. I mean, this is very dramatic, stunning. It really grabs your attention. I don't think this is ready to wear at all. I don't think I, I've never actually even seen this. Uh, you know, I was just at a Walmart in Arizona last month and there was nothing like that there at all. But congratulations to little Nas X. I saw a clip of him going in for an interview and he just meowed. So amazing. Also a lot of tributes to Carl Lagerfeld's cat. He loved his cat with uh, a great, you know, really, really loved his cat as a lot of people do, but a lot of people did homages to Carl's cat as well. I'm not even joking. And then we have Emily Blunt, John Krasinski's wife, and just an amazing actor. Uh, she's just wearing like this like long black skirt. There's like a white, I don't know. This is like, it's like whatever. But when you go from little Nas X with his like dong and then Emily Blunt, it's like, I don't know. Yeah, Emily Blunt, you look good. Uh, and then we got Margot Robbie, star of the summer blockbuster that hasn't come out yet, Barbie. And she's in a very simple black outfit, a very small train. There's like a uh, kind of a... <laughs> There's like this piece that kind of goes over one of her shoulders, like a little mini cape. You can see a little skin connecting the the bra part, little st- <laughs> to the. I don't know how the fuck you say these things. Anyways, she looks great. She's Margot Robbie. What are you gonna? Do? I would love. I would have loved to have seen Margot Robbie go farther. I'm gonna say it, but it looks stunning, elegant, uh, very much a throwback. To, uh, you know, Hollywood of yesteryear, but you know, stunning. Then this is, we got Jared Leto. Now, I don't want to admit this, but Jared Leto kind of seems to be the male king of the Met Gala year after year. He's had a lot of my favorite looks in terms of like even the one where he went, where he had his own head cut off and he carried his head, uh, a prosthetic head that they made of him. And he was in this kind of like red, very red drapey outfit with all this accoutrement everywhere. He looked like a little bit like Michael Jackson probably would have worn, you know, and he's done so many. Last year, he came with somebody that looked like his twin. He does a lot of dramatic, over the top. Even my personal feelings about Jared Leto aside, he really does know the assignment. And he went dressed as Carl Lagerfeld's cat. So he went in a gigantic cat outfit. But it's not like a cat outfit you get at Party City. Like, this is a very well-designed cat outfit. And it shows the cat's blue eyes. He has the cat hat he took it off because he was like hey it's me jared leto and everybody's like we know weirdo and jared leto takes the hat off and he has he's painted his eyes that blue all around the eyes so hats off to jared um and then we got doja cat and just to remind you if people didn't know it was doja cat she was like let me help you out and she wore a prosthetic piece to make her look more like a cat so it looked like a cross between a cat and somebody that was like an extra on a star trek movie but a very cat nose you've got this beautiful kind of white dress that also looks kind of diamond like and it has this uh like a thing that you pull over your head and it has like little cat ears and this is very doja cat doja's a freak dude doja's a freak so you expect nothing less from doja cat and I think she delivered as well. And the dress itself is stunning. The fit is perfectly on her body. She's showing so much arm. You can tell this is uncovered in the back. And it is very, I, I would love to hear her do interviews about her look tonight. Then, of course, Giselle Boonchin, uh, you know, celebrating not being with uh, uh, the loser of the Super Bowl last year, uh, Tom Brady. Uh, she looks very happy, but she's all in white. Kind of looks looks a little bit like uh, something that uh, Liberace would have worn. Uh, it almost looks like angel wings in a second. Uh, Giselle, it just says uh, Giselle Bunchen. I don't know. I was talking. I don't sometimes. I, I want to get. I want to be moved when I see somebody, especially in this setting. I mean, you know. By the way, I don't want to just be moved when I go to the grocery store. Like I, I'm just moved by all the people here at this grocery store. When you're seeing people dressing to the heights of these people, I think you you're looking for some sort of reaction. I sometimes fear that we see these people so much throughout the course of our lifetime, like the Kardashians, that I fail to have a reaction sometimes anymore because I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah. It's like Emily Rodajkowski. Yeah, she's like, yeah, she's really beautiful, good body, sure. Uh, Giselle Boonchin, there's a little bit of that there for me. Uh, You know, I hope she had a good night. I hope she had fun. And then Ben Platt. Ben Platt looks like uh, 
a matador slash uh, waiter at a cheesecake factory. Uh, ben Platt, of course, played the 40 year old man from Dear Evan Hansen. And, you know, like there's a matador. He's it looks like he's wearing this kind of two two pronged little silver belt thing. Um, he looks just it's cool, I guess. It's like the lapels are outlined with black. It's all white everywhere else. The jacket comes down to like his belly button. Uh, it's a look that yeah, he's a hey, that's it. He tried. He really tried. Good for you, Ben Platt. Then, of course, Jessica Chastain. What an amazing actor. I didn't even realize this was Jessica Chastain at first because either she is wearing a great wig or she has dyed her hair jet blonde. She said she did this for Carl and she's wearing this beautiful form fitting black dress that actually poofs out into this train, uh, this uh, the skirt area. I don't even know what the fuck you call it. The train, the fucking thing. The fucking train thing. I know I'm saying it wrong, but it's like it goes down on the floor and it looks like it's all like poofy black. But then there's like some sheer black where you can see that connects the two poofy parts. And she's wearing this like cool necklace that looks like a bottle opener that like kind of juts down like uh, the bottom of her breast area, showing a lot of shoulder and cleavage. She looks stunning. I think Jessica Chastain is gorgeous here. And then we have Alex. I'm talking about that. I don't know how to say his name. He's the uh, one of the founders of Reddit. Uh, on a John William and um, what, what, wait, I'm check, I've got. To, I knew I was gonna. Maritza tried to tell. By the way, Maritza's in this room uh, listening to me do this, and I told her to. Uh, she was trying. She knows how to say this guy's name um, perfectly. Anyways, she's married to the icon Serena Williams, and Serena is wearing like this cool black number, but then at the knee area, it poops out into this white kind of like white skirt thing and she also is wearing pearls everywhere what the hell pearls is having a moment and i guess that's a carl lagerfeld thing so carl way way to go people are bringing up pearls like it's nobody's business um this is uh Maritza told me who this is oh valetta it's amber valetta rob valetta's sister rob valetta of course uh most known for dating sheena and hanging a tv on his wall in under seven minutes uh, but he also has a sister, Amber, who was a, a supermodel, and she's here. She's kind of wearing this clam dress. The top part is clam, covering the boobs. And then, I don't know. It's, it's fine. Amber's gorgeous. And then Billie Eilish. Billie Eilish looks like she is in, like, some kind of, like, a, a practical magic reboot um, or, like, some something with witches. It's... Um, it looks like a lot of black, like a lot of black mesh everywhere. You know, he's got heavy eyeliner and you know, it's it looks like uh, like Wednesday Adams, you know, five years older potentially. But I, I, it's 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 very what we've come to expect from Billie Eilish. Um, so yeah, if you like Billie Eilish, I think you'll love this dress. And then we've got Jeremy Strong and his wife. Jeremy Strong, have you noticed how much he loves the color brown? Well, he is wearing this brown, it kind of almost seems like a satiny material that goes down past his knee and a kind of. Uh, tuxedo, like an old-timey tuxedo shirt, but the shirt is green and it has the ruffles. And then the it's like one of those, it's not a tie. It looks like a green atom, like A-T-O-M. And then it, I think these are black pants and black shoes. Uh, he, you know, he looks he looks all cool and artsy. Like, uh, man, if I was in high school theater, I would be dying. I'd be like, that's the look. That's the look. Then we have Little Nas X. He is... Uh, what is this wool he looks like he's all in wool like a button-up blue wool number he also looks like he has an atom like he has like a a white atom pin maybe this atom isn't an atom maybe this is something directly involved with carl lagerfeld and then he has like this uh he has like a burgundy button-up satin shirt underneath it and then he's just got a mop of curls he's wearing the mop of curls like it's nobody else's business you guys uh, Jack Harlow. Did, was I calling him Little Nas X? I think I, 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 think I might have. It's Jack Harlow. Anyways, then we go to uh, Tommy Bahama and his wife. No, it's Tommy Hilfiger. Tommy Hilfiger, the designer himself. Now, Medisa included this image just so I could talk about the very special relationship he has with um, Chris Jenner and Chris Jenner's boy toy, Corey Gamble. You always see these guys yachting on the south of France or in Italy. Corey Gamble always like with a shit eating grin on his face because he knows he won the lottery. And, uh, you know, they're uh, they're a fashion couple. His wife kind of has this cool 
I don't know. It's a re- you know, she looks very tall, uh, blonde, but she has like some stunning eye makeup that looks like there's potential jewels in there as well. Uh, and a long navy blue skirt that also drapes onto the floor. Uh, but looks like a very handsome couple. That's what my mom would always say. Very handsome couple. Uh, then we got Anne Hathaway. Anne Hathaway looks like she is in this kind of white, ruffly dress that is kind of attached, like almost like goes to her hip up to her shoulder, like or in the, between her boobs. That's how you attach the dress. I don't know. It looks very stunning, very dramatic. The hair uh, looks a little bit of kind of 70s to me. Um, she looks great. I, I, not, you know, but listen, like we've seen so many outfits at this point. Come on. And then you got Christina Ricci from Yellow Jackets, and she is just in a very uh, elegant, simple, shimmery silver number. Uh, the, she also is very dramatic bang work, two very long necklaces, looks really pretty. And then Jenna Ortega, of course, hot off the heels of the hit, hit Netflix show Wednesday. Um, she also kind of looks like a little bit of a matador element in her dress, also a very drapey. Uh, I did say, uh, I, I am told I did say Little Nas X when it was Jack Harlow. Sorry, you guys. She's wearing these kind of clog boots, like patent leather, white and black. But it makes, it looks like these, like the, the, the it, get, it looks like it gives her like an extra foot of height or something. The tie is kind of one of those, uh, it's like a bow tie with, <laughs> I don't know, you guys, look it up. It's Jenna Ortega. She looks great. And then here she is, the lady that dug up Marilyn Monroe's grave to fit into her dress last year. We've got Kimeth Kardashian making her return to the Met Gala. This was her 10th anniversary at the Met Gala. There was a lot of rumors that were put out that Anna Wintour, who is the head of the Met Gala Foundation, was not having any Kardashians this year. And that proved to be false because we had three of them. We had Kylie Kendall and we had Rob. No, I'm joking. We had Kim. Um, but Kim here, listen, after that Maryland thing, I, I kind of said on Monday's episode, wouldn't it be cool if she gained a bunch of weight and showed us that she can look good at any body size? She didn't do that, but I don't necessarily know what this look is. The obvious thing people keep trying to point out is that Kim's Playboy shoot, when Chris Jenner was going, you're doing amazing, sweetie, as she had a bunch of pearls uh, on her nude boobs, buttocks, and Uh, pelvic area um, and she is wearing just she is draped in pearls everywhere and she's also looks like she's wearing her own skims which i'm sure she is and this is what we call brand integration kids but the skims it's kind of giving her a little bit of a poof in the stomach area and i'm like relatable queen right high five but it does look a little odd and I will say when she stands with her sisters, especially Kendall, it really highlights how short Kim Kardashian is. And height has always been one of the key things in being a runway model, a supermodel. And Kim, as gorgeous as she is, doesn't have that, even though I'm sure she will find a way to invent some sort of robotic feature that can get her height at some point. But I don't know. To me, this was not, uh, this was almost like, okay. I mean, especially after so much thought went into last year, I guess, what else can you do? But it did start creating a narrative in my head where I was like, have the Kardashians lost their power in any sort of way? Are they on the downward slope? Of course, you can never count out the Kardashians. But it did kind of, I was like, oh, okay. You know, there was such drama with the Marilyn Monroe thing. There was so much of a story. You also had Pete Davidson, who he made, she may get one of the worst spray tans I've ever seen next to her. There was so much around this. And this is this. This is this. And it is what it is. Um, you know, the hair done by Chris Appleton is very pretty. She's wearing a very big uh, necklace on top of the pearls. Um, it's It's okay. I felt nothing. And then Kendall... I mean, the jolly green giant, my God, how tall are you? She's wearing these boots that make her taller. I mean, just the longest legs. Now, she is wearing kind of like a bodysuit where the legs are completely showing. And, man, this highlights how stunning her legs are. 
I am not the biggest Kendall Jenner fan in the world, but I really, you really, when you say certain kind of bodies, there's a work of art element, even though she might have potentially paid to get some of that. It's really stunning. She has this interesting cape on too. It looks like it's in two parts, but it drapes beautifully. The backside is kind of a white cream color and the, the, the front of it is this black uh, kind of sparkly material as well as the bodysuit that also then has two white um, collars that comes down. Her hair is uh, in a very long bow, um, very long ponytail down the back. And it really does stick out. I mean, I, I really do think this look sticks out to me. Um, and also, if you compare it with the next slide, Bad Bunny, Bad Bunny, he is all in white. There's a lot of rose, um, rose kind of flower work that he's carrying this kind of cape at his uh, hand level that is draping on the floor. It's like a white suit, all in white. His hair is very slick back, very handsome dude. He's in white. Uh, I think those are white sneakers, but it's the white train with all of the embellishment of the roses or the flowers. And I see that as a recurring theme in a lot of the outfits tonight, the ones that we're not even talking about. So I'm guessing Mr. Lagerfeld was a big fan of this kind of work, but it's also interesting to compare this with Kendall's outfit that was a lot in black. And then he is in white. And then you got Miss Kylie Jenner, Kylie Jenner. Like, listen, it, she, she got out of the hotel and she, it was in like this kind of, not a kimono, but it was like this cover-up, a blue cover-up, like it seemed kind of a satiny material, and then she stunningly dropped it. Or not dropped it, she carried it, but it revealed this red, form-fitting, cut-out dress. There's a cut-out area right across the uh, the top of the right boob area that shows a lot of shoulder um, right above the boob, up to the shoulder, and she's carrying that thing that she was wearing over the dress, I it's like a splash of color. A lot of the headlines are like she sets fire to the the Met Gala carpet, and I'm like I don't think she sets fire. My problem with Kylie though is that Kylie is insecure about her face, um, and I think she's admitted that. But in that, I feel like she's been told that she's only good with three poses with her face, and a lot of those make it looks like she's got a poop. She really does. Like she'll be like, and then she'll like do the eye up. Like the mysterious eye up, the mysterious. It's like somebody must have told her that she has a horrible smile because you're gonna like if you see her smiling, you're catching her, you know? Because it's a lot of just like, uh, uh. like I'm like, are you angry? Tell like blink twice. Do you need help? Is Chris not helping? Like is Chris, is Chris have you trapped? Like what's going on here? Like show some kind of facial reaction because she just doesn't. And therefore, to me, the fashion is even like it just doesn't matter because I just feel like it's robotic in some way because she's never posing from her heart. It's always like I've been told these three looks do it. And that's why we see the same thing again and again and again. And there's no marriage between her actual physical personality and the clothes that she's wearing. There's no marriage there. So to me, sometimes it's soulless. I mean, the perfect example, of course, was the homage to uh, uh, Virgil Abloh, where she wore that white baseball hat with the, uh, the, 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 the lattice work over the face, and she just looked like a loon, like did not pull that look off at all. And it's partly because she had no facial reaction. She looked dead in the eyes. She looked like uh, Rachel R Raquel from Vanderpump Rules. Sorry. And then we have uh, Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, whatever we're calling him, looking like one of the kings from Black Wakanda, like literally looks like a superhero to me. He's wearing like very dramatic, like very like it's like a Game of Thrones slash Wakanda forever. And this is another work where you can see all of the flower work up and down this cape. It is very I mean, I'm into superheroes, so I dig this. I don't know. Like, I'm like, yeah. And also this, I'm looking at because I'm like a bigger guy. So I'm like, oh, dude, yeah. If I had that cape, then I could wear that, and nobody really – people would be like, is he big? Is he not? Like, I love P. Diddy. Way to go, buddy. I love this. Uh, and then Pedro Pascal, you guys, as somebody that has a knee injury right now, uh, it, this guy gives me hope because he's wearing basically shorts. He's wearing black shorts so you can see these slutty little knees that he has. And uh, it looks like if you know the German uh, band Kraftwerk – uh, it looks like exactly what Kraftwerk wears on stage. It's a white, uh, sorry, a, a red overcoat, black shorts, pulled up black socks, 
black shoes and then a bright red button up shirt with a black tie. And I, I love it, man. Like this is the perfect blend of looking classy, but also still looking artistically. Um, you know, there's an, there's an artistic idea here and he's just everybody. He's really having a moment and he's very talented on top of good looking, but I found, I got, I, I find a lot of joy in this look. Uh, it, it also kind of makes me laugh a little bit. And I think he uh, really enjoys it as well. And you can tell that from his smile. But I'm all, all, I'm all in on this Pedro look. And then Bella Ramsey, his star of The Last of Us, they are wearing this, uh, I'm trying to describe this, it's kind of like a, a suit jacket that kind of goes into a skirt past their knees. Uh, but also has pants underneath it, patent black leather shoes. The uh, the suit top itself throughout, it kind of has like lines of like white code, I think. kind of looks like the Matrix, but in white. And their hair is parted down the middle. Very cool. I really like the, the, the first season of The Last of Us. So can't wait for the second season. And then you got J-Lo. J-Lo, the one that's married to sad Ben Affleck, which... Man, I wish Ben Affleck was there so bad. It was so fun to make fun of him at the Grammys, being upset slash sad. And I really was hoping for a repeat performance tonight. I, If Ben Affleck had gone, I would have just had him go topless, sans blouse, and just so he could show everybody his huge Phoenix back tattoo that he has. Um, you know that. You guys know that photo. It's an iconic. In fact, I want to get that photo framed one day. But anyways, J-Lo, everybody on E! News, when it came on, everybody was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Game over. And I'm like, okay, yeah. She looks like like a very form-fitting, like kind of, what is that, like pink? Pink skirt, pink purse, or a light pink, and then black, like a black element that goes up past her belly button and these like black gloves that go up to the elbow and then she has like these two pieces two black pieces covering the boobies and then they're attached to some kind of like fuzzy uh neck piece that she has on and then what's really selling this outfit is the hat it's like kind of off off the the chapeau of it all it's a kind of a twisted like a upside down black cereal bowl with a bunch of netting over it it's very dramatic folks so i heard this was a win and then you've got uh designer mark jacobs and he's got a little piece of arm candy because he's got the uh the singer of stars are blind the one and only paris hilton new mom paris hilton um she is all in black like black leather. This is, looks like a leather jacket that drapes onto the floor. Uh, Mark Jacobs has uh, his hair slicked back to slicked down to one side. An oversized tuxedo. Like this looks like a very 1973 type tuxedo with the big old tuxedo bow tie. Um, and Paris looks very leathery, very dramatic eye work here, uh, blonde uh, ponytail. And there's like this black element that goes in the neck, but also straps that like kind of launch off of that. Uh, they look like it's very cool. I, I, I like it. And then uh, Michelle Yeoh, of course, who just won uh, for everything, everywhere, all at once. Uh, she showed up in a beautiful white and black number. By the way, of course, Carl Lagerfeld was always known a lot of his black and whites, and that's why you see a lot of this. But it was very great to see Michelle there. And then Florence Pugh. Now, Florence Pugh, um, star of Midsummer and all of these movies, she shaved her head. She shaved her head, so she has a buzz cut right before this. But she has this stunning headpiece on that looks like it's like two feet and it's all that kind of like the flower and rose or what like black, all in black. It's very dramatic and it really, your eye goes directly to there and you almost miss the dress that is stunning and white draping off of the floor and it has this kind of weird, it's all white, but then it's like this weird black area or these black, it's like a black little tie that ties up the boob area and then the tie itself kind of splits off these two black pieces that go down the front of the white dress it really really worked for me um and then you have uh, uh gigi hadid right this is uh it's gigi not bella gigi um <laughs> the uh the hadids the pride of her mom's eye she's all in a black number i mean just she looks very pretty also wearing pearls uh you know like yeah she's good looking i it's you know, I know she's known a lot for her Met looks. I was just watching a thing where her and Zane, uh, when they were together, went to a Met uh, Met Gala together. Um, I'm just going to skip right past her, though, and go to right to old Cara Delevingne. I'm glad Cara Delevingne 
is there showcasing herself and not behind Meg the Stallion blowing up her dress like she did at the Grammys, like uh, two Grammys ago. But she's in like a white kind of like it almost looks like a button up shirt, but it's unbuttoned down to the belly button and then attaches in this white thing. She has like these two black looks like leg warmers in a way, but they look like satin material. The white shirt also drapes out into this cape and she has these black gloves, which Carl Lagerfeld were, was known for his black leather gloves. Uh, so like fingerless, just the glove part. Uh, her hair is in kind of a. I don't know. It's like a white, very short hairdo, very dramatic eye work. I, I mean, Karen Levine really seems to mean something to a younger generation. I just try. I try to figure out why a lot of the times, just to be honest with you. Uh, and then you've got. Uh, uh, I'm going to say his name wrong. I wish I could pronounce this, but he is one of my. <laughs> he is the little kid from the Goonies and Indiana Jones and the uh, Temple of Doom, and he just won an Oscar for everything, everywhere, all at once. I'm once again trying to look up his name so I don't butcher it. Um, hey, qu- <laughs> uh, K. Juan Quan. K. Juan Quan. And K. Juan Quan. Hey, sorry. K. Juan Quan knows the assignment. Now, this guy looks almost, I mean, very similar to what Karl Lagerfeld would have worn, except he doesn't have the shock of white hair. But he is in also the fingerless leather gloves. He's wearing a form-fitting suit. Um, he's wearing the tie with a silver little tie, uh, little necklace uh, connecting the jacket. Uh, he has a flower pattern or a flower uh, a silver piece of jewelry on the tie. And he, I, I just think he looks so cool and sharp here. This is the kind of outfit, if I was in shape, I would like to wear. He also has the black Ray-Bans on and he just looks awesome. I'm so happy he's there. Um, he actually made the point of saying the night he won the Oscar in the press room, he was like, this is great, but I want more work. People got to hire me. And I hope being at things like this, really let people know that he is around he is ready to work and this guy is a cool dude <laughs> this guy this guy is a, you take it from me mr old navy this guy's a cool dude <laughs> i like him a lot and then you got old uh pete davidson pete davidson looking very thrilled that he didn't have to put on a fake tan this year and i gotta say this is another outfit i totally love he's got a lisa rinna black bucket hat on he's got this long dramatic black coat kind of slash cape the pants seem very kind of fitted but loose at the same time very cool pointed black boots and then the shirt area is kind of like this it's not tie-dye in a way but there is this like kind of blue black white he's also wearing what looks like a rosary bead with a uh, silver cross i believe or maybe that's the adam thing i was talking about also with the black sunglasses black gloves I love this outfit. I really do. It is a major step up just from the run of the mill tuxedo that Kim made him wear last year. Uh, it's good to see. I don't know. Listen, Pete Davidson, you can tell, really likes to be a part of this. He was at the Met Gala also the year before he was with Kim Kardashian. That's where they exchanged uh, digits for the first time. And he was in that kind of white number with the skirt. You guys remember that? But I like that he digs this. It's another aspect of his personality. And then I thought this was great. Entertainment and I posted this photo on Instagram. It was Kim and Usher and Pete Davidson talking. Pete looks very laughy and joking. Now, Pete, uh, Kim Kardashian, if I'm not mistaken, has gone and saw Usher in Vegas twice in the last two weeks. So there is that thought of like, is Kim and Usher, could they potentially ever date? Who knows on that? But it was nice to see Kim and Pete talking. Now, there was an argument in a text exchange between Sandra and Meditza. Uh, not an argument. There, Sandra says this picture makes it look like Kim is the one that obviously broke up with Pete. And she sees this now. But I don't. I don't think that's it at all. I think Pete is the one that said, I, I, you know what? This is getting to be too much. But I think, you know, Kim is a professional enough and also respected all of the stuff that Pete had to go through in terms of the Kanye of it all. Which, by the way, do you think Kanye watches tonight and freaks out? Do you think Kanye's like, boo, Kim, I could have styled you better. I had a big, like, old potato sack I would have had you wear. Do you think he even pays attention anymore? Or do you think he's just doing his thing? But anyways, there was a series of pictures of them laughing and stuff. Now, I know Pete has a new girlfriend. Um, he's, uh, 
I, but I'm glad. I, 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 I think that's very, I'm glad to see them both smiling. Kim does not look upset. And I like that. Listen, for once, the Kardashians and all that kept this quiet to some degree. There is this element of mystery that we don't fully know what happened. But I think at a certain point, it, it really, you know, Pete's famous, but Kim's in another stratosphere. And it's got to be really scary when you get multiple death threats because you're, you're you know, your mentally misadjusted ex-husband is having, you know, it's just a very scary situation to be in, no matter how in love you are with the person, but it's really, I don't know, this, for some reason, I kind of thought that this was a nice thing. So w- I'm very excited to potentially hear more from any sources out there. You know, some waiter is going to make a TikTok tomorrow and go, listen, I was there and I, Usher was farting up a storm, you know? <laughs> then, of course, uh, you know, for all you Bravo fans out there, Paige DeSorbo, she was a throw to commentator on E's. Uh, carpet coverage and so they kept throwing to her and a couple of other influencers and Craig Conover which by the way if you look at this picture on YouTube he doesn't necessarily look like Craig Conover I told uh, the girls that I said he looks like a younger John Jansen Uh, I'm John Jansen Shannon Bedore's ex-boyfriend who always uh, seems very gruff there's a John Jansen element here Craig of course is in this kind of blue patterned uh, like a tux jacket with a bow tie. I'm sure he's made some pillows out of that material. And Paige is in a light blue number. Paige lives for this shit. And she wants to be a commentator. And I, I watch a little bit of it. And I'm, uh, you know, it seems like she's being, she's very successful. And you know, Craig probably eats this shit up about being able to go to the Met. Like he probably loves this. So congratulations to them. And that is so bad it's good. Met coverage 2023. Wow. If you Did I inspire you? Did I inspire you to, to dress a little crazier, a little kookier? I, of course, have mainly uh, a Vanderpump Rules merchandise that I wear most of the days now. Um, but, like, that's it. I hope you guys let – let me know in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube what you guys liked. I'm sure there's going to be stories about the actual what happened afterwards at the parties, and I'll talk to you guys about that on the podcast probably on Wednesday. Uh, I think this is Monday night right now, but that is it. This is Ryan Bailey signing off. Carl Lagerfeld, wherever you are, you you done good, kid. I'm going to go out and get some fingerless leather leather gloves. <laughs>